Earth is truly an amazing place, a place where adaptations take every form and shape, where creatures that are separated distantly can adapt so similarly, where a change in environment can be either catastrophic or mark the beginning for new adaptations. After the sun sets beneath the horizon, animal adaptations become a bit more mysterious. Giant barn spiders begin building their web in order to catch things that fly With into the them. With the assistance of this ultraviolet light, scientists place a light just between their eyes on their forehead, and like little mirrors, light will get reflected back at them. Arachnids. The density of wolf spiders helps researchers determine the health of an ecosystem. The wolf spider's eyes glow like a cat's eyes, which essentially is the equivalent of night vision. When the wilderness is full of darkness, there are a few creatures that emit their own light, known as bioluminescence. Part of many adventurous kids' childhood hunting fairies in the darkness, but most commonly known as fireflies. These are memories a child will never forget, catching fireflies, storing them in a pickle jar, and setting them in their room as a nightlight. The vast majority of fireflies' life is spent underground, as a larva, the adolescent phase of a beetle. But for a few short weeks once a year, something amazing happens. Midsummer, they must leave the safety of their underground dwellings in search of a mate, so their species will live on. The male and female emit different light patterns so they can find each other. The consistency and brightness of the light determines the strength of the attraction. There is a flip side to this story. Some organisms use bioluminescence as a defense tactic. When climatic conditions are right, large blooms of huge single-celled organisms called dinoflagellates gather, and the turbulence from the water causes them to release two chemicals that cause a bioluminescent reaction. Many small creatures such as shrimp and crustaceans feed on these large single-celled organisms. One theory is that a bioluminescent reaction will give away the dinoflagellates predator's position making shrimp and crustaceans vulnerable to their own set of predators. Aside from bioluminescence, many creatures exhibit aposomatic coloration, basically a brightly colored warning label that says, hey, I'm dangerous. In pure darkness, a millipede would be hard to spot. However, they emit a form of bioluminescence that is believed to be another form of aposematism. With the assistance of an ultraviolet light, this color becomes far more apparent. With the assistance of this ultraviolet light, you're able to see things that glow in the darkness. Remember, many creatures have night vision, and this warning label to a nocturnal predator would be very apparent. Several creatures produce a chemical reaction through their tough exoskeleton. Scorpions. The outermost part of their exoskeleton is known as the cuticle. This thin lining is even tougher than the main composition of its exoskeleton. Within the cuticle, a chemical reaction is taking place. This chemical reaction can easily be observed with the assistance of an ultraviolet light. <laughs> All right. We were able to coax him off of his tree, but not off of this piece of bark. He's got quite a firm grip. I wonder if it's a female, possibly with a, a brood of babies. Now, scorpions are interesting. They'll actually carry their babies on their back. I'm sure many people out there in the comments are wondering, oh no, a scorpion. Does that mean you'll be taking a sting from a scorpion? Well, of course, that's one thing we're going to have to do here today. I just want to show you all the true docile nature of a scorpion so people can understand that these aren't something you really have to be terrified of. But yeah, they do pack a punch and they are venomous. And in fact, smaller scorpions tend to be even more venomous than the large ones. It's really interesting that those front claws are actually very reminiscent of something like a crab or a crawfish, but in fact these are arachnids. They are not related to crabs at all. And it's also interesting that scorpions like wasps have adapted a stinger and inject venom, as do centipedes. But each three of those species are totally different in their evolution and have evolved independently from each other, whereas scorpions are in the arachnid family like spiders, centipedes are not. They are in the myriapod family, like uh, roly-polies, and yet 
wasps are in a totally different family. So yes, we are gonna take a sting from this scorpion. This is Florida's bark scorpion. We're gonna go ahead and let this guy back go in the tree where we found it. And once again, that is Florida's bark scorpion. Thanks everyone, we'll see you next time. My friend Thomas Spencer, you can't see, shine him in the face, can't see his face, that's him right there, Thomas Hello, Spencer. Girl. He wants to see what the iridescent glow of these scorpions actually looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and... Sorry y'all, I know it's really dark. Go to that pine tree, that's that big pine tree and shine on the pine tree. Yeah, see one right there. Yep. Goodness, they're everywhere. Oh yeah, you definitely been hard. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, let me, uh, will you film it again? <laughs> Baby. Oh, how did you get it? <laughs>